here we see a woman who husband is dead who's she really does not have an idea what what next for my life but does she stop no she doesn't her tenacity her resilience played good and she was seen she was located don't put a pause into your life even when life knocks you hard keep on working keep on moving because god is figuring it out greetings brethren ah it's such a wonderful time again to come to you all the way from maxland hotel uh, and just to be able to have our conversations around women inspiring the woman calling out the woman i hope so far we have been in, you have been inspired just as i have been inspired and uh, it's such a an honor to just be able to hear from god and to be able to communicate what god has inspired in my spirit and in the people that we have been having this conversation with and i hope you are learning and unlearning also from the conversation that we have had so today we start on a new series about stepping out in faith have we ever really thought about the origins of our thoughts because i have come to realize the origin or our our thoughts originate from two origins and one is fear and the next one is faith so fear always pretends to keep us safe but faith calls us to dare and to step out to believe into something that we fear not to possess fear pretends to keep us safe but faith calls you out to dare and believe and demands you to draw courage into that which you have no clue about or into the unknown and therefore we will be looking at a beautiful portrait in the bible uh, a lovely story every time i i i look into the the, the biblical women I, i'm just inspired and this particular one that we'll be looking at is just sweet and encouraging and it's a story of loyalty it's a story of friendship it's a story of of, of, of tenacity it's a story of one who dared to step out into the unknown and this character is called Ruth and just to take us through uh, i would want us to to just as i have always loved just to take us through the description of this lady ruth so ruth literally means friendship every one of us has a friend do you really have that friend that you can always count on the ride or die kind of friend we all desire to have that type of a friend and this is the description from my bible about ruth Ruth literally means friendship or a female friend. Nowhere else in the Bible do we find a lovelier picture of a true and loyal friend. Ruth's primary virtue is tenacity to purpose. She was a woman who was steadfast. See her constant in her commitment to her mother-in-law. and tireless as she gleans in the field the result of this constancy is her marriage to Boaz and the birth of Obed who became the father of Jesse whose son was David the king moreover since Jesus was born of the seed of David we see how Ruth the alien Moabite became part and of the lineage of the Messiah we are about to uncover this character we are about to uncover this woman and see the lessons that we can draw out from this character so karibu sana 
Welcome to this show. This is the Deborah Generation Show, only on Wema TV, the voice of hope. At this juncture, I would love to welcome my friend and my mom, Pastor Miriam. Mm. Karibu sana. Thank you. How have you been, mom? I've been well, thanking God for life and health. Mm -hmm. And um, generally for the many things that he has enabled me to do. Mm -hmm. Yes, this week I've been reminded of what Jesus said in John 15, that yeah. without me you can do nothing. Yes. And so I'm reminding myself like the old hymn that I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord. Yes, it's been a good walk with the Lord mm. this far. Amen. Mm. Amen. It's always um, refreshing every time I have had to just sit under you and listen to you as we, 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 we go through different topics of life. It has always been encouraging and refreshing to hear from you. And I'm so excited because uh, we, are just, we have just finished the book of Judges and we were, we were looking at the portrait of Deborah. Yeah, yeah. And now here we are looking at another woman, Ruth. Yes. Who, who is Ruth? Who do you... How do you understand Ruth? Ruth, Ruth, as you have explained, the name means friendship uh -huh. or relation or attraction, if you like. Uh -huh. One, we see Ruth as a girl who is introduced to us in the book of Judges, not Judges, uh -huh. but Ruth, after a family of Elimelech and um, a woman called Naomi that moved from from their home in Bethlehem, Judah, mm -hmm. the place where there was supposed to be sufficiency and the praise of God, they moved out and went to a foreign land, mm -hmm. a, a land of the Moabites, because this was occasioned by famine. Imagine there was no frame, no, there was no food in the house of bread, mm -hmm. Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. They had to move and seek food elsewhere in another country. But there's something I want us to understand. Ruth is a Moabite, a Moabite, which is from the from the from the children or the daughters of Lot, Lot. and Lot. Mm. So the Moabites and another son called Ammonites mm. were born through Lot and his two daughters. Mm. You remember the old story yes. of moving from Sodom and Gomorrah mm. and Lot's wife becoming a, a pillar of salt. A pillar of salt. Mm. That is where we start to get to understand the descendants of the Moabites brought forth a girl called Ruth. Yes. And so Naomi and Elimelech and the two sons went into a place, went down to another country mm -hmm. to look for solace, to look for food. Mm -hmm. And while there, because they took a time, we are told by the Bible that Elimelech died. Mm -hmm. And then... Later on, the two sons were able to take wives from the Moabites. Mm -hmm. And then they died before siring. They had no children. Yes. And at that point is where now we see a clear picture of Ruth and the sister Opa. And then we see a talking, a conversation developing between mm -hmm. Naomi and Ruth and the other daughter. Mm -hmm. And she is telling, she was begging them to go back home mm -hmm. because she was already too old. She did not have a husband. Mm -hmm. She could not be able to get pregnant and have children and then raise them and give Ruth and Opa a, a husband mm. to be able to have descendants for her. Yes. And so she was telling them, just go back home. Mm. But we see the tenacity and yes. the, the, the decision that Ruth made so strongly mm. without even knowing where she was going. Mm. By now, I'm looking at Naomi as a woman who mm. is devastated, who has nothing to show for her, having come from home to go and look for something, mm -hmm. who is at her zero. And she's almost down there with nothing to offer. Mm. But Ruth decides, no, where you go, I will go. Yes. If you go to a hall, I will go with you. Mm -hmm. If you go up, I'll go. If you go south, I'll go. If you go west, I'll go. And she decided not to go back to her family. Mm -hmm. But this is one of the plans of God. God plans. And he worked behind scenes mm -hmm. because in the long run, God saw salvation of the whole world. Mm -hmm. Just like in John 3.16, the Bible says, 
that God loved the world mm. and gave his only begotten son. Yes. That whoever believes, not mm. some people, mm. shall not perish but have everlasting, everlasting life. life. So in this plan of uh, Elimelech and, uh, and Naomi mm. and their sons coming down to Moab, mm. God had a plan mm -hmm. that after something happens, something devastating might happen, mm. but in the long run in generations mm. to come, mm. the Savior will be born. Yes. And the whole world will understand mm. why all these things have been happening. Wow. So Ruth is a portrait of the world that is being brought into the plan of God of salvation by the church itself. Wow. Israel here or Naomi here showing us the church that should go out there and bring in others to bear fruit for the kingdom. Wow. Yes. And I can't help but to, to ask my, myself, what if she decided to go back to her homeland? Even if she decided to go back home, God would still work out another plan. But then she, would, she may not have been the one who would have been at the picture or she may not be the one who would have been part of that lineage. You, 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 you talked about the tenacity yes. that takes the throne. The throne, yes. Yes. We, we have been talking about another character mm -hmm. and we saw how she decided to, to move out mm. and do things extraordinarily. Mm. And so for those people that God appoints, there is a mechanism or a system that helps them, like pushes them until they are able to fulfill what needs to be done. And unless they are stating otherwise, mm. God will push them. Behind the scenes, mm. we will be seeing misery. We will be seeing things are falling apart. But God will be pushing his agenda, his mm. agenda, until, it, in a way, the line that he wants completed, you know, like the connections he wants put together, mm. come together. Mm. Because you see now, here the girl Ruth goes, <laughs> friendship. She goes with a woman who is ailing, who is who is devastated, who is grieving the mm. loss of her husband mm -hmm. and her two sons. Mm -hmm. The woman who cannot even go stand and say, I am Naomi anymore. When she goes back, you know, she says, call me Mara. Mara. I'm already too bitter. Mm. And now I see why we call Maziwa Mara. Mm. You know, like it's, bit, it's getting bitter somewhere. Yes, yes. And so, but Ruth is being used by God. Mm -hmm. Through her tenacity, her patience, mm -hmm. her willingness to leave her people mm -hmm. and be joined to this woman, mm -hmm. to walk step by step with her, mm -hmm. to hold her weak hand mm -hmm. and tell her, Mama, you're still strong. You can go forward and you'll make it. And out of encouraging Naomi, not knowing that God was in it, God mm -hmm. worked a way for her to connect to this person who will provide her security, mm -hmm. who will give her a place to call her own. Mm. Yes, to away from home, away from home. And I'm looking at uh, at at Ruth, and I'm 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 I'm, I'm just picturing myself or mm -hmm. any any woman in this situation. Mm -hmm. And you are there. You have been married. Your husband is dead. Your 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 father-in-law is dead, and therefore it looks like that lineage is literally come to a stop, or yeah, it's yeah. been cut, mm -hmm. and there is no hope. And this woman, your mother-in-law, is old, so even if she was to get a companion, uh, really there is no likelihood that she would get uh, another child. And even if by miracle, by chance, she did, would you wait for that son? to grow up until they are able to marry. You'd be already too old even mm -hmm. for yourself to have mm -hmm. yourself mm -hmm. a, another child or to have yourself a child. And I'm thinking, if my mother-in-law would have told me, please go back home and I give you the blessing that you may find another man, uh, get married and have a family, I would actually really be inclined to take her uh, her advice and move on because if I'm at my prime, why would I want to to hang on to this old woman and put my life to a standstill, not knowing what is ahead of me? And therefore, for Ruth, I saw she was really loyal. Mm -hmm. When she said, I do, 
I think she meant it with every fiber of her being. Yeah. She she was caring enough to forego her own needs so that she can be able to take care of the needs of the mother-in-law. And she was daring enough to believe even with this woman life can there, there must be something else for my life even as we are moving to a place that i don't know and that thing of daring to believe to step into unknown there is the fear that holds us back mm -hmm. when everything is playing against us every odd is working against us we are inclined to go back to fear and hold back from stepping out from that comfort zone. Because I find that when life, when life really hits you hard and you are going through a situation like Ruth and Naomi and Oprah were going through with this pain and this and this not knowing, okay, at this point, what becomes of my life? You are inclined. I don't even blame Oprah for going back. Mm -hmm. Because to her, she thought, let me go back to my father's house. My husband is dead. And therefore, I could be betrothed to another. Mm -hmm. Because nothing is tying me down. Yeah. But here is a woman who decides, yes, uh, this lineage is cut out completely. But I am going, wherever this woman is going, I am going. If they brand me, that, that young girl who decided to mm -hmm. stay, mm -hmm. uh, to, to, to live stuck in that family where there are no sons, where there is no hope for this lineage to continue, I will still hold on to this woman. What can make a woman forge forward into the unknown? Well, you, you talked about faith. You talked about stepping out in faith. And I've just said the purposes of God appointed for each one of us must come to fruition, must bring forth the intended intention. Well, I'm repeating the same thing, but it's like I'm putting emphasis. Mm. It's like the intended outcomes of anything must be brought forth. Mm. And so what we have just said is, one, God was in this, bringing forth everybody who needed to be in the line of salvation mm. so that no Jew would say, this is my business to bring forth the Messiah who will come later and save the world. God wanted it to be the plan he has for everybody. And so there is the element of faith, which is only found in believing in God. Mm -hmm. You talked about fear and faith. Mm -hmm. Faith is the substance for things hoped for. Hebrews 11, 1. Yes. The evidence of what is not seen, that it is there. Mm -hmm. And so apart from that, uh, Ruth was of the old times. Mm. The word of God was still working. The Holy Spirit was still there to unction somebody, mm. to move them to where they need to move to. And so she was ready to go. And maybe I always tend to think she looked at this helpless woman. Mm. And I'm thinking Naomi is pleasant. That's the meaning of her name. She must have been a pleasant, diligent woman. Mm. She may have taught them about the Torah and, yes. the, you know, like the Hebrew, the Hebrew culture. She may have the, what the Jews loved. Mm -hmm. And maybe she was told, you know, you, you are the daughter of the, you are a descendant of our nephew or whoever, Lot. And maybe she felt like, wow, this is it. Oh, these are my people. Mm -hmm. And so she continues to say, your people shall be my people. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, apart from that, uh, she, 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 she has to move. Considering she's friendship herself, she felt the need to walk hard in hard with this helpless woman and help her. And maybe God ordained this, that when she gets to Moab, mm. she will be the one to bring forth the Moabites yeah. to the table. Yes, you know, yes, like yes. we are in the political yes. fight yes, by now, yes. where everybody is asking, what shall we get mm. from this? Mm. 
-hmm. What are we getting from this table? Mm -hmm. God is using Ruth to bring the Moabites in the plan of, of salvation. Mm -hmm. And so he orchestrates this whole deal. Mm -hmm. That's why Alpa, who means found or someone who is not very friendly, mm -hmm. has to go back. Yeah. yeah, she has to be removed <gasps> from the plan mm -hmm. because she has nothing much to offer mm -hmm. in accordance to the plan of salvation. Mm -hmm. But Ruth has everything to offer. Mm -hmm. Friendship, attraction, she has she's she has good countenance. Mm. She can be able to work walk an extra mile mm. without being pushed. Mm -hmm. Remember how she is gleaning in a land, in a farm of someone she has not even met, mm -hmm. and she's able to do the work tirelessly mm -hmm. and feed the mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. It's all because she was ordained. Mm. And like we have already said, all of us are ordained for purposes. Mm. And all of us must be keen, have our antennas up, that when whatever we need to do comes on our way, we are able to say, this is it, and run with it. Yes. I, 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 I love that. And the fact that even, even in, in the confusion of not knowing what next mm -hmm. or uh, what becomes of my life, yeah. Her tenacity comes out so strongly, and I'm looking at situation that some most of us women uh, go through uh, in life, mm -hmm. in our careers, mm -hmm. in our marriages, in our relationships, in our at home. That uh, sometimes when things are falling apart, we tend to put a pause. Yeah, we, our, our life kind of stops. Mm -hmm. uh, but here is a woman who everything was work was not seeming to work as maybe what she had planned or what she had dreamt, but that didn't stop her. That didn't stop her from working hard. That didn't stop her from going to the fields to work hard as God was orchestrating things to fall into place mm -hmm. because he says he works everything together for the good of those that love him. Therefore, she may not have had or had clarity or had known the end game of God for her life, but in the midst of the pain, in the midst of the confusion, in the midst of not knowing what was to become of her life, she was busy. And I think that is a very important lesson we can learn from this woman that don't put a pause into your life. Even when life knocks you hard, when situations don't work according to what you have planned or what you 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 think you should be at in a certain stage of life, keep on working, keep on moving because God is figuring it out. Exactly. And that is what we were talking about last time when we were talking about uh, having clarity and having the courage to press on and staying true to the cause is even when things fall apart, mm -hmm. keep on moving. Keep yeah. on moving, mm -hmm. keep on moving because God rewards your tenacity. It's true. That's it. True. You 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 cannot stop woman. You cannot you cannot say my husband is dead uh, and and you he was the breadwinner, for example, and here I am a stay home mother and and you you think there is nothing more for my life. That is where we find a lot of women now they get frustrated with life. They, 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 they live a life that is so dark because at some point their life was pegged on someone else. And therefore, when that person is no longer in the picture, they don't find their own identity. Mm -hmm. And therefore, they put a pause or they put a stop into yeah. their lives. Yeah. But yeah. here we see a woman whose husband is dead, whose, she really does not have an idea what what next for my life but does she stop no she doesn't and as you're talking i'm thinking she doesn't even belong she's not a jew and she's a foreigner in this whole deal it's like their mother went to canada and now she's supposed to come to africa mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. well that's not a very because well jew is up mm. moab is down down so it's like she has to get to come and she doesn't even know what she's following mm -hmm. i'm sure they haven't traveled back there and seen what is there or what belongs to naomi and uh, in fact as you're putting it 
it's, I've found situations where women have found themselves so much confused and lost mm. after having lost their spouses. And uh, we need to come to a point where we have to look to God because it was not so much about Naomi because I am not sure she had anything to offer mm. because you see what work this foreigner girl goes to do. It's like there was nothing this woman is really going to offer after mm. having been away, let's say, for more than 10 years. Mm. And then she comes with a foreign girl. The, the, I'm sure even if she would speak any other language, much of it should be a mix of the Jewish language and the, the Moabites, yeah. considering she has not been here. Yeah. She has just mm. come with a mother-in-law. Mm. And uh, she fought against all odds mm. and she was able to break through. Yep. Her tenacity, mm -hmm. her resilience played good and she was seen, she was located. For us, last time we talked about discovering yourself mm. and we say discover yourself, remove the veil, the veil. Yeah, go out there and see what the world offers mm -hmm, you. Mm -hmm. Don't just sit in the house and cry. Mm. That doesn't add value. Mm. And so this is a lesson to all of us. As you said, there are times life doesn't give us what we want mm. and we cannot continue just weeping for, mm -hmm, her, for mm -hmm, life. Mm -hmm. I remember what the Mzungu would tell you, if life doesn't give you an orange and it gives you a lemon, you make, make yourself a you lemonade. You squeeze lemonade. <laughs> and these days, lemon is up there. Mm -hmm. So you take it and you take it well. Mm -hmm. You package it and you repackage it mm -hmm. and you make it a good thing and mm -hmm. you sell it out. Mm -hmm. And that is what Ruth did. Mm. She stepped out with courage to face other realities that she hadn't experienced there mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. And the life is not constant. Life is not constant. Mm. This is to mean life doesn't remain like the pulse of electricity that only move when they are moved or when termites have eaten and then it has fallen mm. or like a, the wall of Jericho that Israel had to shout and cry to God to remove. Mm. So life isn't constant. Life mm. has its challenges. Yeah. Issues will erupt. And we have to pray for the wisdom like Ruth to be able to follow the winning line. Mm. Yani we follow the winning team. And regardless of whether it is the popular side mm. or the in, unpopular, mm. you know, we are looking at the popular now. In our country, we are trying to look who is more popular. Mm. But sometimes it is very, very, very important mm. to follow the unpopular code and get good results. Why? Because the unpopular line is the line of faith. Mm. Faith is going the way where there is nothing. Mm. Faith is like moving where there is no road. Mm. Like you are at the Red Sea and God is saying cross. And you're like Moses saying, how do I cross mm. God? Mm. And there God makes a way because mm. God makes a way where there is no way. In mm. fact, the best way is to follow faith because without faith, it is not possible to please God. Mm. Yes. Wow. And that is just so amazing because this woman um, encourages that woman who is a widow. Yeah. This woman encourages that woman who has no plan for their lives mm -hmm. or that woman whose life was pegged on someone else and that now that person's that person whose life was pegged on is no longer there and this woman tells you you can arise again you can stand up and get your own identity and start moving because as you move god is figuring it out all for you you may not have most of the times ask even the 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 ones we look up to those that we think that they've got it all figured out when they started they may not have had the clarity of where this thing is going or uh, exactly how am i supposed to move with this my journey or my career or but as you start the most important thing is Make the move. Mm -hmm. Start moving. Yeah. And God gives you clarity as you move. Every step gives you a bit of clarity. Every step gives you a bit of clarity. But if you sit and start moping, you may really not 
get to that point of knowing the full potential that God has put inside of you. And therefore, we are calling out to you, woman. Arise and shine. Wake up. Make that move. It's only until you start moving that you start realizing that God has a greater plan for you. And therefore, you have everything inside of you and you have God who is the power behind all that greatness inside of you. So arise and shine for your light has come. Until next time, see you then.